Fish on the line. And I got my other rod in, so that's good. Ooh, this is a this is a horse. This is a nice fish. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I'm gaining nothing on this fish. I am gaining nothing. Like Come on, baby. Into the last color of lead now. He hit like a ton of bricks. We'll see if he's as big as he feels. <laughs> oh, it's a trout. It's a trout. Sure. This is right where I caught that. Well, where I hooked and lost that big one. I'm right in the same spot. So hopefully it's his. Hopefully it's his twin his twin sister. We'll see. Just real gentle here, pedaling kind of into a quartering into a wind and pedaling to keep the fish under control. Oh man, head shaking there. Oh, he's pulling drag. Whoa, buddy. Oh boy, that's what you come to Lake Davis for, guys. Man. Still haven't seen him. He's right there, though. Get a flash once in a while. Oh, he's a nice fish. Come to daddy. Oh, this is a nice heavy holdover. Come here. Come on, baby. Come on, you're tired. Come on, you're going in the smoker. Come here. Oh, I got you. <laughs> oh, that's three pounds. That's every ounce of three. That's a nice fish. Oh, buddy. That's a stud right there. That is an awesome fish. That's the fish of the day. Um, that fish is probably, probably real close to three pounds. He's only about 17 inches, but he is husky. He is hefty, and what a fight. What an incredible fish. That's what you come to Lake Davis for. He couldn't lay off that orange fly. You retrieve that fly here. He could he could not lay off that fly. And that was down, I don't know, probably close to 20 feet, 17, 18 feet, something like that. Um, I was kind of quartering into the wind, 1.6 miles an hour. And uh, that guy just came along and he hit like a ton of bricks. Howdy guys, Cal here. Welcome back to the channel. I have a viewer question here, which I'm going to get into. Um, out here at Collins Lake, Lucy and I were on the anchor. We're out here anchored in fairly deep water, doing a little prospecting with bait. I haven't fished bait, well at least I haven't fished bait successfully here. In about 10 days, um, we've been doing some trolling. The bite remains in transition, so fish have been a little hard to come by. We've definitely had our shots, we've had our, had our bite windows, but a huge part of guiding is getting out and prospecting, and that's exactly what we're doing here. I got two rods in the water with the uh, green garlic power bait on them in uh, as I said deep water about 30 feet deep and I'm gonna give this a half an hour and see what happens so let's get to the question um, this fella which I misplaced his name but he referred to his kayak as the chitty chitty bang bang kayak that crossed in front of me out here a few weeks ago at Collins so we're gonna call him the chitty chitty bang bang guy and uh, he had a couple pretty good questions that I I've been itching to address so number one um, he said he wants to be confident in the depth that he's running and he says he goes on to say he's usually running a couple lead core rods one with three colors out so two miles an hour okay that's basically gonna put you at about 15 feet deep okay um, each color is 30 feet long it has lead in the center and one color typically gets you five feet deep at two miles an hour so three colors um, 15 feet deep more or less he said his second rod is often a lead core rod running closer to the surface but sometimes he puts that rod away and he top lines with a spinning rod and uh, I, I gotta say you're pretty much right on track here's the rule of thumb on depth for me if I'm targeting rainbow trout if I have a surface temperature 65 degrees or below pretty confident that there are going to be rainbow trout right on the surface um, at some point during the day maybe all day long so I like to keep a bait if I've got that surface temperature you know somewhere in that top five foot range particularly early 
late or any time that I have chop on the water, because as I've said here on the channel many times, the trout perceive the chop as current, they orient to current. So when you get chop on a lake in the afternoon, very often you'll see the trout move up, orient into that chop and uh, start feeding rather vigorously. Remember when the trout are, are moving, when they're in a current situation, when they're working, they have to eat more, therefore they become more aggressive and they're often easier to catch. Um, but you know, temperature dictates depth. If you're up at Lake Shasta in September and the surface temperature is 85 degrees, guess what? You're not gonna get at those fish with lead core. You're gonna need a downrigger because those fish are gonna be down at 75 or 80 feet deep. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, so I, I think your, your, your depth selection is fine. If you have that cool surface temperature, here's something else to think about, okay? Let's assume that there's not any chop on the water. I'd still keep one line up in the top five feet of the water column, but a question I like to ask myself is, when would a trout disappear in terms of depth from uh, overhead predator. In other words, when would a would an osprey flying by not be able to see the trout? Okay, and I did a video about this in the past, and, and we kind of determined that at Clearwater Lakes, that takes place at about 15 feet. So I think that's a great place to put your second line in general. That's kind of the disappearing point, the point where under glassy conditions, the trout start to feel comfortable. They feel that they're invisible. They feel like they're, uh, you know, not vulnerable to predators up above their head. So anyway, all right, moving on. Number two. He says, how long should I continue to troll a setup before I make a global change? Okay, this goes right back to the trout trolling pyramid. Basic trout trolling philosophy. If you don't have any, you know, immediate experience at the lake you're fishing. Now, if you fish the lake every day, like I do here at Collins Lake, you're going to have an idea of where the fish are and what they're going to respond to. But let's say you're hitting the lake, you know, fresh in the spring. Maybe you fished it before, but you haven't fished it recently, or maybe you never fished it before at all. I always advocate starting out large and fast with your lure selection, going around, doing some scouting. Maybe you get hit. Maybe you don't. If you're getting hit on large and fast lures, continue pulling them until you're not getting hit. If you don't get hit, make some notes of where you're spotting fish in the sonar, where you're seeing surface activity, maybe where you're seeing other anglers catch fish, and now you've kind of got a starting point. Fast lures for me, 2.7 miles an hour up to about three and a half. That's your speed spoon, speedy shiners, um, metal head magnum, trolling flies, Rapalas, Yozuris, all that stuff you want to get out and be aggressive with, okay? My next stop in terms of speed is pretty much in that 2.2 two to 2.6, two maybe two mile an hour speed range, but you know, 2.2, two, two, two six. That's my medium sized spoons. That's where I start slowing down with my standard trolling flies, tube flies, stuff like that. Um, you know, trigger spoons, trigger spoon or uh, trigger spoons, cripple lures, cast masters, those types of lures, medium sized lures, medium speed. So you drop down in size, you drop down in speed and you see what happens. And now you're starting to work on areas where you've caught fish, you've gotten hit, or you suspect that there are fish holding. If that's not working, it's time to get down into the lowest speed range, which for me is anywhere from 1.5 to about two target speed, 1.8 miles an hour, okay? And that's where I'm gonna play with small spoons, um, my trigger trigger spoon juniors, uh, my micro trigger spoons, my trolling flies, grubs, stuff like that threaded worms okay that's when that natural bait's gonna come out and there's a lot of lures on the market in all of these speed ranges you know i don't expect you to go out and stock your tackle box with my lures that would be fantastic for me but you probably already have a lot of lures just remember when you look at your tackle box you want to break it down in terms of speed okay then you can play with color and other things like that but speed is a big factor, all right? And remember, in terms of changing lures, you've gotta be confident in your offering. And you know, when I'm trying to prospect, when I'm out there looking for changes that might make a difference, I always have one lure in the water that I'm very confident is gonna get hit. And I use that second rod to experiment with. If I'm getting fish on, you know, a 
Trigger Spoon Jr. That's, that's orange and chrome. And I think, hmm, maybe a, a bikini colored needlefish is going to work. I play with those needlefish, the cast masters, the stuff on the other rod. That way I always have a confidence bait in the water. If you're not fishing with confidence, you're not going to fish as hard. You're not going to have the attention to detail. And that's going to cost you fish. Confidence in your gear, confidence in your setup is very, very important. Beyond that, pay attention to the details and remember i've said this before i'll say it again time on the water is critical experience always build an experience always reflect on your last trip or your last trips keep a journal the trout are the very best instructors okay that is critical every time you hit the water whether you catch fish or not you want to record all the details and you want to you know have some some thoughts about how you could have improved on that last outing and that is going to take you a long way down the road to consistent success if you're consistently hooking fish you're going to consistently be catching more and bigger fish and that's our goal here on the channel hope that helps all you anglers out there in youtube land I'm going to jump for now. I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks for all the support and check out fishhuntshoot.com. We've got everything you need to get out on the water and catch a mess of trout. I'm Kel Kellogg.